I have a condition called ocular cutaneous albinism, which for most people they just know as someone being an albino. It's a recessive condition, which means you don't have enough melanin, so it'll make your hair and skin super fair, and some people will have really like light blue eyes. But also you need melanin on your retina, which is at the back of your eye, to help it fully develop. What most people don't know is that most people with albinism also are vision impaired or blind. My eyesight is 636, is how they measure it. Um, so it means that what an average person can see at 36 meters, I see the same quality at six meters. It means I'm like too blind to drive. I kind of really struggle to see things um, unless they're up close. I'm quite photophobic, which means that bright light is like um, quite overwhelming for my eyes. And also I have a nystagmus, which is like my eyes shake to focus, but it doesn't shake when I see things. So I don't really realize it's happening. As a kid, anything that makes you stand out is kind of like a bit difficult. I'm still super pale, but I have like yellowy hair and dark blue eyes and things like that. If anyone would like ask me why I was so white or like ask me why my eyes shaked, anything that drew attention to me like created a whole lot of shame because I just wanted to blend in and not get additional attention. And so I think I carried that into like my teenage years when like being different in any way is mortifying and would do a lot to like either deflect or make fun of myself. If I make fun of myself, no one can make fun of me first. The images in popular culture of people with albinism are pretty negative like they're often like the freak or like the da vinci code murderer like the images are not positive they're not they're not beautiful they're not sexual they're not desirable so i often will do these things to conceal so that i get to choose when i come out to someone even when i do i still when i say i have albinism or i'm an albino there's still a like every single time there's a bit of me that's like ashamed even though consciously I'm not but my body goes through that like I notice it and I go oh it's still there it's interesting the way that we kind of hate the things that make us unique but then like if you think about divorcing them from who you are it's actually quite frightening because you kind of wouldn't be who you are so I think about that quite a bit we still in, in Australia and in lots of parts of the world see people with, with disabilities as like lesser than and that they need our help rather than it being like about giving people the right to have dignity and to have personhood and autonomy and agency in their own lives. People with disabilities wouldn't feel as othered if the world wasn't designed to exclude them. Living with what is mostly an invisible disability. I feel like I'm constantly like outing myself. Like whenever I start a new job, I'm always really conscious of having to be like, hey, I can't see that, hey, I can't see that, hey, I can't see that, hey, I can't see that. Like, can you guys kind of get with it? Cause it's getting frustrating. <laughs> um, and not that anyone is unkind. It's just frustrating to always have to keep coming out and raising it all the time. It's interesting because we assume able-bodiedness, right? Like we assume, and that's why so many of our systems are set up to support people who are able-bodied. They have to be the one to mobilize all these changes. And that invisibility and coming out all the time is quite, it puts the burden and the emotional labor on the individual. And I think I started thinking about that a lot around my sexuality as well, being a bisexual woman and thinking about how that part of my sexuality is also largely invisible unless I'm in a same sex relationship. And then my identity slips into lesbian and it's you never feel fully seen. In some ways you get a lot of privileges from being able to pass as straight or able-bodied. It means you get to choose the terms on which you come out. You can move through spaces a lot more safely. It's up to you in a way, but at the same time, it can sometimes be really painful because you don't feel fully seen. You're constantly a bit terrified about coming out in some way. The fear of being rejected for that thing is kind of always on your mind because it's invisible. You don't know immediately what people think of you, um, which as I said, is a huge privilege sometimes, but also can be really confusing and sometimes a bit scary for a lot of women like self-love can be a rebellious act we live in a world that tells us we're constantly not enough i'm in a place now where like politically i want to self-love because like i believe women should but it's still a process of undoing so much conditioning around needing to be more and i'll be lovable when 
And I think as well, like for me with self-love, I'm still undoing messages around that my vision impairment is embarrassing or shameful or a burden on others. Um, and I still have to keep reminding myself that that's not true. I think I believe, I'm, oh no, I, I believe I'm lovable. Um, but I think like in my teenage years, it was like, I'll be lovable when like, I have enough fake tan on or I'll be lovable when like no one notices my eyes shaking or I'll be lovable when they get to know my personality and it's not focused on my appearance. I think as well like when you have um, a disability or something that makes you other you kind of I don't know for me I don't think this would be the case for everyone but for me I feel like I'm, I'm having to overcome like my narrative is very much one of overcoming if I can be a vision impaired filmmaker then then I'll have made it and if I can be legally vision impaired but still a great parent who can get their kids around then I will have made it like it's this story of overcoming so I think for me like I really need to unravel that like self-love is about overcoming I want to be content where I am and I'm getting more and more confident all the time that I should I'm enough where I am rather than where I'm heading something I'm really trying to notice at the moment is like the things my brain do does. When I have an idea that I like or an image, creative image comes to me that I like or I hear myself in conversation being perceptive or using language that I think is beautiful or interesting or the things that I offer to my friends and my relationships, trying to really like emphasize those qualities as much as I can and give myself opportunities to practice those things as often as I can. Using my empathy is valuable and using my unique perspective is valuable. Like that will just gain more and more weight. And I think as much as I can kind of pivot towards environments that are valuable, like show my value, that's, yeah, that's really important for me. Surrounding myself with people who like all look very different and there's not one way to be gorgeous and there's not one way to be sexy and there's not one way to be fit as much as I can try and just surround myself with an environment that's more representative of like how diverse everyone is. I think that's really positive. Maintaining self-love for me is about like having really fantastic and deep and nourishing relationships with other women, having a really strong circle of women around me all the time that I can say like oh I just got talked over in a meeting and you don't have to justify that that was shit you don't have to deal with someone being like yeah but maybe they didn't mean it or like, like undervaluing your experience my relationships with my women are like what give me the greatest sense of self and make me feel most beautiful and make me feel most like I mean where I should be in my life and make me feel smartest and most driven and like I'm really capable and I feel very lucky to have found a group like so many remarkable women I just think well if they're that amazing and they love me then I must be pretty amazing self-love is like primary I don't think but I don't think you ever reach a point I don't think you're like I've built the foundation so now I can build the house for me like if I'm not willing to self-love then I can't like I'm always going to be looking for something in relationships that's quite like filling a gap um, and I'd rather like have that in me and then anything else is a bonus I think like representation is the biggest way we can teach women or not teach but enable women to love themselves more like if you're only seeing one type of woman or one type of person in leadership in comp like in beauty in sexuality in how they spend their day and how they look what they can do with their body it's really hard to push past like not being enough and not meeting that expectation not being perfect and I think the more that we can like see these full, amazing, done, not perfect humans. I think that will really like give more women the opportunity to see themselves and love the bits of themselves that are reflected. It's our time. I feel like we're getting like, I mean, in, you know, might just be the things I'm seeing, but I'm just seeing more and more all the time, like examples of women just like being unapologetic in their personhood and I think yeah the more that we can look at those images like it's and have them those stories feeding us is pretty powerful.